We all know that the Pixel 6 series is a reinvention of the company's smartphone lineup, and that's obvious on the Pro model. The standard model, however, takes a slight step back with a design that feels more googly, specs that hold up to a flagship, and a price that arguably makes it the best deal on a smartphone today. That said, this is our full review of the Google Pixel 6. 9to5Google is sponsored by NVIDIA GeForce Now, the cloud gaming service that transforms nearly any laptop, desktop, Chromebook, Mac, Shield TV, Android smartphone or tablet into a powerful gaming PC rig even via the Chrome browser. GeForce Now gives you instant access to over 1,000 games, including 90 of the biggest and best free-to-play titles on PC. Stick around to the end of the video to learn more about how GeForce Now can get you gaming on every device you own. If there's one thing that's always been true about Pixel designs, they've always stood out. Each device, especially from the Pixel 2 forward, has had a distinct look and feel that can only really come from Google devices. That look and feel has of course evolved over the years, with the Pixel 4 series adopting matte black side rails and adopting a larger camera module, but they've always felt very much like they fit into Google's overall aesthetic. Out of this year's two flagship devices, the standard Pixel 6 is the one that really keeps up this tradition. It has matte black side rails of the Pixel 4, a milder version of the Pixel 2 XL's two-tone look, and the pastel colours with whimsical names that only Google could really come up with. The design of the smaller phone in Google's lineup is one that we think really is more visually appealing than the Pro. It's more inviting and has a unique look, and the matte black side rails help that camera visor blend into the design a little bit more smoothly. Practically speaking too, that matte texture on those side rails gives this phone more grip which is something that's needed with that glossy glass back finish. Perhaps the only negative to the design though comes from the screen bezels, which are just a little bit bigger than the average smartphone out there. That said, the bezels on this phone are far from large, and they're not obnoxious by any means either. They're just a little bit bigger, and we think that's fine. The display though in between those bezels can be described similarly. It's pretty much fine. It's a 6.4 inch 1080p display with an AMOLED panel that's sharp and more than bright enough for outdoor use but there's nothing particularly spectacular about it. You can definitely tell the difference between a 1080p panel and a 1440p panel here by putting the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro side by side, but on its own, the 1080p display really does hold up fairly well. Most importantly for many though, it's completely flat, which means no annoying curves and potential weak points, plus it just plays much nicer with screen protectors. That said, it's not completely without issue, as it would have been lovely to have seen a 120Hz display here, but not because of that higher refresh rate, rather it would have been nice to have seen Google put an LPTO panel in here with a variable refresh rate, as that can actually have a positive impact on battery life. The other quirk about this display is the quality at different viewing angles. It's minor, but at certain angles the colours do seem to shift ever so slightly, especially when looking at bright UI elements. This is likely going to go unnoticed by most of you out there, but it's something you might notice, and it is definitely not a deal breaker like it was on some older Pixel phones. Brightness of this display also holds up well against the competition, it's easily legible in bright sunlight and the auto brightness feature appears to work well with that kind of scenario, probably more so than many of the smartphones out there. Meanwhile in the software department everything about Android 12 on the Pixel 6 is just as good as it is elsewhere, like it is on the Pixel 6 Pro for instance. Google's latest major release adopts material U designs and colours that match your wallpaper, it's also a nice touch that depending on the colour of your device or which colour you choose, the setup flow is themed to match the phone's physical colour. And this is just a nice added complete touch that Google seems to be adding across the board on the 6 and 6 Pro. Unfortunately though, the just like it is on the Pixel 6 Pro, Android 12 does feel a little bit unfinished and a little bit rough around the edges, which means some software issues are the same here as they are on the bigger model. App crashes seem to be quite common with certain apps, that haven't been tuned for Android 12, such as YouTube Studio, and then some other commonly used apps by the team here at 9to5Google. Other minor bugs include randomly translucent notification shades, but that's pretty rare by the by. Some bugs are attributable to apps rather than the actual Android 12 itself, but Google does need to do some serious bug squashing in Android 12L when that does launch later next year. The good news though is that while there are some issues with Android 12, the performance difference between Google's $599 phone and its $899 phone are essentially imperceivable in normal usage. The same Tensor chip is used and the phone it offers more or less the same levels of power and AI processing, leaving the UI feeling fluid 
language processing blazingly fast, and really this phone doesn't seem to skip a beat save some of those crashing issues with certain applications, which again we must admit is very rare. Like the Pro, the phone can heat up when playing games, but not to an uncomfortable level or uncomfortable degree, and performance has been up to our own expectations. In no way though is the Pixel 6 a gaming phone, but it should do the job just fine with most of the titles and 3D titles that you would want to play. One thing that becomes instantly apparent when using the Pixel 6 is just its overall price, and specifically what you're getting for that entry level. First and foremost, you're getting Google's ideal software experience, which is Android 12, with Material U and all of its apps pre-installed. But beyond that, you're also getting the best versions of many of those experiences. We need to speak a little bit about battery life though, because that's been an area of contention with the entire Pixel 6 series, but at least in our testing, it has been very impressive. On paper, the 4,614 million power power pack is plenty enough for good endurance, but you would have figured the 6.4 inch 90 Hertz display would have had a bigger impact on the overall display. Luckily, at least in our experience with several units, things have been good here too. Although from a personal perspective, I can genuinely get a couple of days of moderate usage from the normal Pixel 6, with around six hours of screen on time being the low end average. My colleagues here at 95 Google have seen similar lifespans, but more condensed into a 24 hour period and charging at the start and at the end of the day, for instance. Unfortunately though, we can't say that you'll experience the same endurance, given the wild variations that some people out there are seeing on the devices, but our experience has been good and the Pixel 6 is an all day phone with ease, plus with adaptive battery tweaks and learning how you use your phone, it should get better over time. So the initial poor battery life that some people are seeing may improve the longer that you use the phone. On top of that, charging is also now faster with a new 30 watt charger, but you will have to part with extra cash for that. So we would suggest that you stick with a slower charger and charge overnight. And overall that 30 watt speed is pretty much slower than most comparable smartphones on the market that offer higher wattage power bricks. Of course though, Google smartphones have always been known for their stellar camera performance and the Pixel 6 keeps up with that legacy. The new 50 megapixel primary sensor is just like on the Pro model, genuinely really good. Colors are rich, details are very sharp, and the natural bokeh on this updated and larger sensor is a really quality addition. As we spent more time with this new primary camera setup, it's made it apparent to us just how aggressive Google's HDR is currently. It can sometimes feel like the software is still overcompensating for the older 12 megapixel sensors found on other pixels, and leaving some Pixel 6 shots leaving slightly over sharpened. This doesn't happen constantly, and although it hasn't ruined any of our own pictures here at 95 Google, it would be nice if Google toned this back a little bit, especially on things like faces and some of those finer details in shots. The 8 megapixel front facing camera is solid, but honestly average at best. And the ultra wide camera is 12 megapixels and it is just fine. Compared to some other smartphones, it isn't quite wide enough, but the shots it takes are generally reasonably good, especially when you have good lighting, which is more or less all you can really ask for in the grand scheme of things. Obviously the biggest drawback of the Pixel 6's camera setup is that it lacks a dedicated telephoto lens. The Pro's telephoto sensor is arguably the best reason to buy that device over the standard model as it enables not only further zoom as the 6 is limited to just 7x digital zoom but also very sharp shots at its standard 4x zoom level. You can get a totally different usually even better shot out of that phone from a distance then you might even be able to from the standard lens close up. While super res zoom is okay on the Pixel 6, as it does neatly use a digital crop on that larger sensor, it's just no match for dedicated hardware. That said, we're unsure if that is going to be a deal breaker for some people out there. We actually think it might be, but however, this isn't the only standard phone that lacks a telephoto lens. And in comparison to those devices, the value here kind of speaks for itself because the image quality is so good. To not beat around the bush any further, the Pixel 6 gives you the best camera for the least money hands down. There's just no argument here. You will not get a better camera experience for $599 on any other device out there. The closest competition is probably the iPhone 13, which starts at $799. Telephoto or not, it's just hard to not be too mad at this overall decision. But beyond the quality of the sensor, it's once again Tensor, the chipset, that helps Google stand out a little bit more here. The stronger and customized image processing enabled by Tensor allows Google to process images after they've been shot far quicker than the company's more affordable A-series devices. 
as well as a faster than last year's Pixel 5, which was the flagship device you may remember. All of the new features found on the Pro model are also included, so you don't miss out on motion blur, face unblur, magic eraser and more on top. And just like the Pixel 6 Pro, video is another area that is solid, but not quite up to the same levels as many of the best in the business. It's still backed though by neat features such as noise reduction and live HDR plus for 4K video though. So video is another area where we'll give it a pretty high check mark. To wrap things up with a few more tidbits and extras, keeping things quick and simple, haptics on the standard model are identical to the Pixel 6 Pro, and that's to say they're genuinely really good. Do they beat the iPhone's haptic engine? Well, no, but they do hold up very well. So every interaction is also with a nice vibration-based feedback. As for the fingerprint sensor, once again, it is slow, but it works fairly well. We're not using a screen protector. With one fitted, it can be a little bit frustrating, but a recent software update has improved things significantly, so it is recognizing fingerprints that little more accurately. And over time, anecdotally, it seems to be getting better at recognizing my own fingerprints when I'm using the normal Pixel 6. The speakers as well on the standard Pixel 6 are decent, with audio that cranks up fairly loud and is mostly pleasant to listen to, but it's a far cry from the best in the business. Audio though is genuinely very nice and clean, with no distortion even at their top volume levels. As a final aside on the little Pixel 6 tidbits and extras, the buttons on this phone are genuinely fantastic. They're very tactile, but not overly resistant, and they don't shake around as much in the chassis or the housing as they do on the Pro model. We definitely wish Google though had kept their wonderful coloured accent button, but alas, that is no more. That said, the buttons on this device are genuinely fantastic, and we think you'll love them. In summary, the smaller Pixel 6 is quite simply one of the best deals on the market today. For $599, you're getting what is a flagship tier device with a genuinely stellar camera setup, an excellent and truly unique design, software support that outlasts any other Android phone, and battery life that, at least in our experience, has been extremely good. Even without a 120Hz display, telephoto camera, and some other little upgrades that you get on the Pro model, it's a very compelling phone, and given the price difference, it actually feels like for many people out there, it could be the better device of the two to go out and pick up. So that is the Google Pixel 6, cheap, pretty powerful, and one heck of a package just for $599. And that price really is quite impressive. We would love to hear though your thoughts on this device. Let us know down or what you think down in the comment sections below. And if it's not for you, then what would you choose instead? It's really interesting to hear your comments. But until next time, this is Damien with 95 Google saying thanks for watching, and I will speak to you later. 9to5Google Google is sponsored by NVIDIA GeForce Now, which lets you play PC games completely free in the cloud across all of your devices. And with a GeForce RTX 3080 membership, you can access the unparalleled power of a cloud-based gaming machine powered by RTX 30 graphics, which unlocks 1440p mobile gaming at up to 120 FPS and 4K HDR gaming right from your TV with the NVIDIA Shield TV hardware. If you want to learn more or get started for free, then head to geforcenow.com via the link in the description, or check out NVIDIA's GeForce Now Thursdays, which celebrate and highlight all of the latest releases, news, and all things cloud gaming each and every week. And thanks to NVIDIA for sponsoring 95Google here on YouTube.